are about to have a very in-depth conversation. But before we have that conversation, I want you to think about a couple things because the frame that we're going to set around this, the lens you need to view this conversation that we're going to have through is all about you and your potential. I think all of us can agree that every person was born with the innate ability to be healthy. We were designed to be healthy from day one, not needing drugs and surgery to survive. And so as we think about this, the question then becomes is what makes someone unhealthy? What takes someone on a process from being por per born perfect on day one into a place of disease, whether it's young in age or whether it's old in age, hopefully I can put some picture pieces of the puzzle together for you so that you are better equipped to share this with your loved ones and ultimately get the most value out of what we're doing here in our office. Because what's going to happen is you're going to start to see some things unravel through the course of the conversation that we're going to have. And I'm going to make it super easy for you to see that the results that you're already getting lie, not because of some special magic trick that I'm doing with your body, but because I'm allowing your body to heal. It was designed to heal. So imagine for a second that you're a little kid and you fall off your bicycle and you scrape your knees. Did you ever have to wake up in the morning and remind yourself that you needed to heal those knees? The answer, obviously, I'll go ahead and let you think about it for a second, is no. You never had to remind yourself to heal your knees. You never had to go to bed at night and remind yourself to beat your heart or to pump your blood or any of the things that keep us alive because our bodies were designed to do all of these things without us having to think about them through the guidance and coordination of the nervous system. So the nervous system controls all. Without it, life is not possible. So as we go through, just remember, you were designed to be healthy and through a series of decisions or actions or things that happen to us is what makes us unhealthy and takes us on this process of disease. And so as we go through, I'm gonna walk you through exactly how it happens. I'm gonna give you all the most up-to-date research and I'm even gonna give you a table of contents. So if you wanna jump around, but before we do that, we got to get into a couple things, a couple pieces of vocabulary that you have to understand. So start here, start here. It's going to be important that you just lay a little bit of foundation before we move into the research. And I'll give you a deep dive into that in the table of contents so it makes it super easy for you to follow along and understand. So the first thing we have to get to is the autonomic nervous system. And the autonomic nervous system is our nervous system that's split into actually two branches. So the first branch of the autonomic nervous system is the sympathetic. Now you've probably heard these terms before. So the sympathetic is the stress part of the nervous system. It's responsible for our fight or flight mechanism. Now, something interesting and something very important to understand about fight or flight is the fact that fight or flight means and implies two things that are very important. And the things that fight and flight or running away both have in common is that they require lots of movement. Remember, fight or flight requires lots of movement. It wasn't named fight or flight so you could just sit at the desk all day. It was meant fight or flight so you could either get in a fight or run away, both of which require lots and lots of movement. Now on the other hand, think of this like a gas pedal and a brake pedal. If the sympathetic or that fight or flight mode is the gas pedal, the parasympathetic is the brake pedal. And the brake pedal tells the body to slow down, it heals the body, it's a stay and play or the rest and digest system. So what we're going to focus on is how when your body is ramped up in sympathetic mode, you can't heal because you can't be in both of these modes at the same time. You need to be in healing to heal and stress to fight or run away for protection. And so here's what happens. Anytime you have a stress, anytime you get into fight or flight mode, whether it's drinking a cup of coffee, whether it's getting stuck in traffic, whether it's having an argument with a significant other, maybe it's the stress that your kiddos have with school and an AP class or some sporting event or drama on social media or whatever it is, I think you could all think of a time in your lives when you had this feeling in your stomach and your heart starts to race. That is a stress response. And when you have those stress responses, it's important to understand exactly what happens because what happens is what causes disease long term. Now, it's good for your body short term, but long term it's bad. And you're going to see how this plays out when we get into the research. So here's exactly what happens regardless of what your stress is. Stress, going to the gym is a stress. Drinking a cup of coffee is kind of a stress on the body. Dr eating bad food is a stress on the body. And here's what happens anytime you put your body under stress. The first thing, the adrenal cortex releases cortisol and catecholamines. We're going to just focus primarily on cortisol 
profile, but know that it releases other catecholamines like epinephrine and norepinephrine, which increase heart rate. So when you have increased heart rate, it increases your blood pressure, increases your blood sugar levels, increases your blood fat levels and cholesterol levels, it increases your clotting factors, increases your protein breakdown in muscle tissue and connective tissue. So this is important because people who say that, oh, I'm just stiff and achy and I can't recover like I used to in the gym, these people can't recover like they used to in the gym because of the fact that they're stuck in this stress mode. Increase fear, anxiety, insulin resistance, decrease short-term memory, memory and ability to concentrate and learn new material. Man, that sounds a lot like our kiddos who are diagnosed with ADD and ADHD. Memory, ability to concentrate, ability to learn new material. And then next, decrease serotonin, Increase sensitivity to pain, so people who feel pain are constantly stuck in a stress mode. Decrease growth hormone and testosterone and loss of bone. So let me just back up for a little bit. If you look at increased heart rate, blood pressure, sounds a lot like cardiovascular and vascular disease, which is a big killer in the U.S., one of the top three. Notice go down if you go down to increase clotting factors. Increase clotting factors, also one of the top 10 killers of people in the U.S., clotting being a stroke. And then lastly, we have increased blood sugar levels. That, my friends, long term is diabetes, increased blood sugar, sugar levels. So here on this list, we have a burden of things that happen to us when we're in a chronic state. Short term, if a bear is attacking us in the woods or we're getting attacked by someone, we need to have these things fire in our body. But when they're staying on for extended periods of time, it wreaks havoc on your system and your body can't heal, it can't function, your brain can't be at the level it needs to be, your memory can't work, you can't make decisions well. You have increased fear, anxiety, depression. It keeps you from being motivated. Testosterone down there at the bottom. Testosterone is responsible for your motivation. And when it's turned off by the action of cortisol, then your body's not healing. You're not releasing growth hormone that allows your body to recover and heal and be healthy and strong and have a good, clear memory so you can run your business and make more money and be more present with your wife and kids. All the things that matter in your life all come down to this stress response right here. And if it's stuck on in your body, You'll never be as healthy. You'll never be as productive. You'll never be as successful as you could or you should, and it doesn't matter of age. So then the question is, is what is this stress, and what do we do here in our office? And here's the answer. Stress, long-term, leads to what we call nervous system interference, or the fancy term that you're going to see in the research that I present is called vertebral subluxation. So here's exactly what happens. You have a chronic fight or flight. So remember, fight or flight means fighting or running away. The problem is we sit in traffic, we sit on our cell phones, we sit playing video games, we sit in the classroom, we sit at our desk, and we're rarely ever getting up and running or moving or doing what we're designed to do. And that leads to this term called dysautonomia, which is an imbalance between the sympathetic and the parasympathetic system. As a result of that, our bodies are smart and they're designed to protect us. And since we're not fighting or running away, the brain says, hey, we need to send another response. So it's a subcortical fight or flight or this subcortical stress response, which ultimately leads to hormonal imbalance. Because you're not fighting and you're not running away, the brain says, hey, maybe we need to add a little bit more protection because you're not doing what you're designed to do. And then lastly, when that happens, we already talked about this on the previous slide, but you have inhibition of the neocortex. So you have decreased cognition, that memory, ability to learn, ability to rationalize two things, and social skills. All of this comes from the neocortex, which is ultimately shut off by the action of cortisol and those other catecholamines that we talked about in stress response. So short term, this is great because you don't need to be thinking about paying your taxes or setting goals if you have a bear attacking you in the woods. The problem is here in Southern California, we don't have a bear attacking us in the woods. We have traffic and we have bills and we have businesses and we have kids and we have soccer practice and we have games and we have homework and we have all the things we need to do for our kids and our families and rarely are we fighting and running away but we're just saying stress and stress and stress and stress and that leads to these three bullet points. So you have the chronic fight or flight, subcortical fight or flight, which is the fight or flight, the stress response that you can't feel because the joints of your spine stop moving properly and then you have inhibition of the neocortex. The neocortex is important. It's also called the prefrontal cortex and this it's responsible for reason, logic, problem solving, planning, planning, memory, directing attention. So if you want to be more successful in any area of your life, you have to have the prefrontal cortex working. It's actually what makes us human. And without it, 
the prefrontal cortex is literally shut off by the action of cortisol. And so what happens is you get decreases in reason and logic and problem solving, socialization and developing and pursuing goals and personality traits and inhibition of counterproductive impulses. So being able to have willpower to not do things that you know are going to hurt you are all decreased as a result of nervous system interference. So the question then is, where does the nervous system interference come from? And that, my friends, is going to roll us right into this research portion of what we're going to talk about. Now, this is heady. Jump to the parts that you're interested in. I'm going to lay it on you thick because it's something that I'm passionate about and I want you to know. And we just want to create as much value for you as we possibly can so that you're empowered to make decisions for your family members, for your friends, and let people know that, hey, this isn't something, this isn't black magic, this is something that actually works as backed by lots and lots of research. So where does interference come from? Well, the first place is birth trauma. So these two studies here, I just have a couple quotes from them, um, and you can get these entirely online. Many newborns have minor injuries during birth. And then in birth injuries, conservative chiropractic care was initiated and successful. So there's lots of different birthing injuries. Part of it comes from the birthing process. And so the birthing process, a lot of things can happen. So parents who aren't doing natural births, uh, which many of us don't, which is totally okay, but just understand that the blood brain barrier is immature in the fetus and the baby and for a long time after birth too. So it's not just at birth. So that means that any drug that mom gets injected with or takes prior to pregnancy, or I'm sorry, prior to birth, uh, isn't going to be uh, safe for the baby. Things that seem to be okay for the mother may be harmful for the baby because that blood-brain barrier isn't fully developed yet and those drugs will get into the brain, into the nervous system of this little kiddo before they're even born. This next quote from the same study, local anesthetics rapidly cross the placenta when used for epidural, paracervical, pudendal, or caudal block. These are just local anesthetics. So local, meaning it should just stay in the area, but the problem is that it doesn't. It can cause varying degrees of maternal and fetal neo neonatal toxicity. This is the physician's desk reference. So this is something that is given to physicians that they use as an actual reference. Where else can nervous system come from? Bumps and falls. So nervous system interference creates changes in the front part of the brain. So in 12 to 19 month olds, they averaged 2,368 steps and fell 17 times per hour. So imagine all these little bumps and falls, all these little stresses on the little baby spine uh, that aren't getting corrected from the time they're little. Super important. Bumps and falls continued. Bumps and falls are going to lead to or can be a cause or a result of lack of coordination, which is all coordinated by the brain and the central nervous system. So accurate execution of movement depends on the ability of the central nervous system to integrate things that are coming in, somatosensory, coming in from the body, the vestibular system, which is your balance system, and visual information regarding position of the body. Vertebral subluxation, a stated altered afferent input. Afferent input means messages going to the brain that may be responsible for ongoing plas central plastic changes. It's well established that altered afferent input to the central nervous system leads to changes in CNS functioning. All of those big fancy words to say this. If you have interference in the nervous system and the joints of the spine aren't moving properly, then the central nervous system, the brain and spinal cord, those things that we talked about that are responsible for success, that frontal cortex, isn't working as well as it could or as well as it should. Childhood stress. So a plausible contributor to the income achievement gap is, wor and wor is working memory impairments caused by stress-related damage to the brain during childhood. Stress-related damage to the brain during childhood. Note, key word, stress. Chronically elevated physiological stress is a plausible model for how poverty could get into the brain and eventually interfere with achievement. So stress gets into the brain and interferes with achievement because it su shuts off the part of the brain, that frontal cortex or that neocortex that's responsible for things that make us successful. So childhood stress, this is stress of being in AP classes, the stress of more homework, the stress of social media, the stress of technology, which is what we're gonna talk about next, all negatively influence the brain because we're exposed to these things long term. Stress from technology. I'm not going to read you this whole thing, but let's just skip down to the middle. Children's developing sensory, motor, and attachment systems have biologically not evolved to accommodate the technology like computers, tablets, and cell phones. An increase of physi physical, physiological, and behavioral disorders that the health and education system are just beginning to detect from technology. Diagnosis of ADHD, autism, coordination disorders, developmental delays, speech, learning disabilities, uh, sensory processing disorders, anxiety, depression, and sleep disorders are all associated with technology overuse in our kiddos and they're increasing at an alarming rate. 
at an alarming rate. This is from 2013, so this is not new information. We've known this for a while that technology is literally destroying our kids' brains because it causes stress to the body. Toxins and pollution. The air that we breathe, the food that we eat, all contains this crazy chemical called glyphosate. GBH is just glyphosate-based herbicides. They contaminate drinking water. They contaminate our rain. They contaminate our air. When humans are exposed to those, the World Health Organization and others are now calling it a human carcinogen, and it's everywhere. The problem is it can't get, be, it can't get taken out of the water supply because it's water-soluble. So the question then becomes, how much stress are we under? Well, last year, John Hopkins told us this. The typical American goes through more physical, chemical, and emotional stress in 30 days than their grandparents did in their entire lifetime. Just think about that for a second. You and I are under more stress over the course of the next month than our grandparents would have been in their entire lifetime. And what's the reason for that? It's simple. Increased technology. Increased toxins in the air. Increased stress at work. Increased traffic. Increased sitting. All of these things when we have these fight or flight responses, but we're not moving like we were designed to. So the question then becomes here in the office is why the spine? Why does the spine matter? Well, here's why the spine matters. Because in the 80s, 1981 to be exact, Roger Sperry, one of my favorite researchers in the field, found that 90% of the stimulation and nutrition of the brain is generated by movement of the spine. Note that I added the word proper here because proper is important. Proper movement of joints of the spine is ultimately what matters. It has to be proper movement, and that's where I come in because I can detect where where your joints aren't moving properly, which is wreaking havoc on your uh, nervous system and your immune system and your body's ability to heal itself and your body's ability to focus and be present and be more productive and have more clarity and more mental pr productivity. All of these things that matter because 90% of the nutrition and stimulation of the brain comes from proper movement in the joints of the spine. Proper movement matters. So here's another piece of research. Movement, touch, and human connection to nature, ensure normal development of posture, bilateral coordination, optimal arousal states, and self-regulation necessary. Self-regulation meaning, one meaning of that could be motivation, good versus bad, right versus wrong. Young children require two to three hours per day of active, rough, and tumble play. Note that we don't do this anymore because we have technology and we have video games. And so we're literally setting our kiddos up from day one to have poorer posture, worse bilateral coordination, which is going to lead to more bumps and falls, and then all the other things that I talked about with that stress response in the beginning. So how does a chiropractic adjustment affect the frontal cortex? Well, there are a number of ways, and here we're going to get into the research. It's going to get a little science-y. Just bear with me. I'll break everything down for you. So here's the first study. It's from one of my favorite researchers. Her name is Heidi Havoc and a bunch of others, and here's what she says. A change in prefrontal activity following chiropractic care there may therefore explain and or link some of the varied improvements in neural, neural meaning nervous system or nerves, function previously observed in the literature, such as improved joint position sense error, reaction time, cortical processing, cortical processing meaning how fast can someone think about something and come up with an answer, cortical sensorial motor integration, reflex excitability, so reflexes, motor control meaning muscle control, and lower limb muscle strength. So when we adjust the joints of the spine, we literally get better processing, so better memory, better focus, better ability to think through a problem faster, more cortical sensorimotor integration. So all that means is taking what's coming in from the body to the brain and sending out proper messages. Reflexes, muscle control, and muscle strength all increase through the chiropractic adjustment. Next, the change in the prefrontal cortex is seen as this study suggests that altered input from dysfunctional joints, joints that aren't moving properly, leads to altered processing of somatosensory inputs, can influence processing of somatic and sensory information by the prefrontal cortex. Chiropractic care by treating the joint dysfunction by removing where the joints aren't moving properly appears to change processing by the prefrontal cortex. This suggests that care may well have benefits exceeding simply reducing pain. It's not a about pain, it's all about the brain. It's not about pain, it's all about the brain. It's not about the pain, it's all about the brain. 
all about the brain. So chiropractic care, we remove the joints that aren't moving properly and we move those joints stop moving properly because of that chronic fight or flight mode and the body trying to protect itself. So when we get them moving again, the fight or flight mode gets turned off. The body can now go back into balance or homeostasis and it can start to heal itself. It's not about pain. It's about healing. It's about health. It's about longevity. It's about the brain and brain health and being able to make clear decisions and be sharp mentally for the long haul. So that's prefrontal cortex activation. Now let's look at what the research says about muscle contractions. So another study by Heidi Havoc and her counterpart Bernadette Murphy, and here's what they have to say. Sensorial motor integration involves highly complex emergent properties that are linked to adaptation and homeostasis. I just talked about homeostasis a second ago. That means balance. And that chiropractic adjustments influence many of these integrative neural processes, such as proprioception, which is balance, somatosensory processing, and feed-forward activation. Following a single chiropractic adjustment of the subluxated, subluxated meaning not moving or that nervous system interference joint, the feed forward activation time improved by an average of 38%. This study demonstrated an improvement in central nervous system control of muscles associated with the stability of a specific joint due to chiropractic adjustment. So 38% more stability and 38% better reaction time based on just one adjustment. So imagine what this can do over a lifetime. Next, descending pathways necessary for vestibular influences on sympathetic and inspiratory outflow. So what these results found is that there was a 20% greater increase in lumbar SEMG amplitude after treatment. All that means is that after a single adjustment, athletes had stronger muscle contractions measured by electromyography something that we can measure right here in our office. So one adjustment, 20% increase in muscular contractions. Chiropractic manipulation increases maximal bite force in healthy individuals. So what this study did is they took healthy individuals they who had no issues, no complaints, and what they did with these individuals is they had them through this crazy uh, device that they installed, they had them bite down on it and wanted to look to see what how strong they could bite down on something. Then what they did is they took a group of those individuals who were healthy and they adjusted them one time and they wanted to see how long or if at all their bite force would increase. And so their bites got stronger for the people who were adjusted. And not only were they just stronger, but the bite force, if we look at the highlighted section, increase in bite force remained at one week follow-up. This is the first study to show that a single session of chiropractic spinal manipulation or an adjustment, as I like to call it, can increase jaw bite strength compared to a sham intervention. No, this increases muscle contraction, muscle strength. So if you're an athlete, this is absolutely important to you. Next, coordination, reaction time, and balance. So this is from the Journal of Electromyography and Kinesiology. So chiropractic manipulation, again, the adjustment, alters TMS-induced eye wave excitability and shortens the cortical silent period. So here's what the study's saying. Eye waves are just waves that are measured in the brain. Increases in excitability of the motor pathways to low threshold motor units of the human tibialis anterior muscle. These findings may reflect mechanisms of increase in strength shown by other studies following spinal manipulation. So what this is saying is that because we're increasing the excitability of the brain and shortening the cortical silent period, we're getting better muscle contractions. Cortical meaning that neocortex that we talked about in the beginning. So this one's an interesting study. It's one of my more favorite ones. Again, Heidi Havoc, she's a rock star. I love her. Um, she finds in this subclinical neck pain and effects of cervical adjustments, manipulation on elbow joint position sense. So how accurately someone could identify where their elbow was in space. Furthermore, results suggest that even a single session of adjusting dysfunctional cervical segments of people with subclinical neck pain can improve their upper limb joint position sense. Now, the question you may be asking, I said it's not about pain, it's about the brain earlier. What is subclinical neck pain? Subclinical neck pain is simply this. Someone who's had a flare-up of neck pain, but then the pain goes away and doesn't come back, and they may have another flare-up at some time in their life, but most of the time they're out of pain and they just have a flare-up every once in a while. That's considered subclinical neck pain. So for even for these people who were otherwise healthy, they maybe had one flare-up of neck pain, they had better joint position sense. Think about this for an athlete who wants better reaction time or who needs to hit the three-point shot or put the ball in the goal in the cross. 
having that joint position sense is ultimately what's going to allow you to be more accurate and more balanced along the way. So same thing, we already saw this study before in a different section. I just want to bring it up and reiterate again. After a single adjustment, athletes had stronger muscle contractions measured by EMG technology. This study also found one other thing which I think is very important. Proper posture, alignment, and nervous system function are directly related to balance, eye movements, and control over your breathing. So remember we talked about in the beginning that posture, I uh, needed lots of movement to have, pro have proper posture and the problem is that our kiddos aren't moving as much because they're exposed to technology. So we found that proper posture, alignment, and nervous system function are related to balance, eye movements, and control over your breathing. So less breathing, less oxygen in, the less your body's going to heal itself. Let's keep on rolling. In an 85-year-old, so it's not just for athletes. This is for everyone of any age. If you want to be balanced and live a life worth living, quality of life. Over the course of eight years and 250 adjustments, the patient's medical physicians told this patient that he was healthier while under chiropractic care. The patient had experienced improvement in gait, balance, stability, coordination, posture, and reported increase in strength in the lower extremity muscles. He was now able to get himself in and out of a chair. In addition, the patient was able to reduce the amount of prescription and over-the-counter drug medication this time. Moving on to inflammation recovery, and sports performance. Now, I know we see a lot of athletes in our office, but this is going to be important not just for athletes, but people who otherwise think that they're healthy because, listen, it's not always about how you look or how you feel. It's literally how your internal environment's functioning. So right now, if you're 24, 25, 26 years old and you feel like that you're as healthy as you're going to be and you're going to stay this way forever, I'm telling you, unless you're getting adjusted, there's always going to be more. And here's what the research says. This study was done, uh, you can see at the bottom, um, what they did is they wanted to look for decreases in cytokines, which are inflammatory markers in the bloodstream, without decreasing something known as substance P in normal healthy subjects after chiropractic care. So here's what the research finds. The nature of anti-inflammatory effect observed after adjustment or spinal manipulation is presently unknown, but recent recognition of a neural immune circuit, so neural meaning nerves, immune meaning immune system, we'll talk about the neural immune connection here in just a second, as instrumental in the control of inflammatory inflammation may suggest that activation of endogenous anti-inflammatory pathways should be considered as systemic consequence of SMT, which are spinal adjustments. Recent investigations have shown that vagus nerve may control central inflammatory responses. So getting adjusted, reducing your inflammation. Getting adjusted, better recovery. Getting adjusted, better joint health. Getting adjusted, better mobility. All of these things matter for our high, high level athletes. And I know, as I have experienced for myself, when people say that they're, when they're 30 years old that they're just meant to start deteriorating, that's absolutely not the case. It's because the nervous system has experienced so much stress in the body and that the body's stuck in this chronic fight or fight mode and there's dysautonomia and hormonal imbalance. Effective spinal manipulation on pelvic floor functioning changes in pregnant women and non-pregnant women. So this is a very interesting study. I'm going to mention it twice, but we're going to mention it one here for athletes. So one of the findings of the study, we're going to jump to the second finding first. So notice the part that's highlighted in red. A second novel finding in this study is that non-pregnant control group of women, which consisted of a convenience sample of local chiropractic students, appears to be able to perform a voluntary valsava maneuver. Voluntary valsava maneuver is just literally how hard you can contract your pelvic floor muscles to a similar, similar degree only previously seen in elite athletic or pregnant women. So strength of muscle contractions following adjustment on non-pregnant women previously only seen in elite and pregnant women. Amazing finding. I love this study, and we'll talk about it again when we talk about pregnancy. Athletic performance and physiological measures in baseball players following upper cervical chiropractic care. This is a pilot study. The results showed significant improvement at 14 weeks in muscle strength, long jump distance, and the group receiving adjustments. Moreover, this same group showed significant improvement in capillary counts at 5 and 14 weeks of chiropractic care. So this is a long-term study. At 5 and 14 weeks, not only did these people have better muscle strength, long distance, uh, long jump distances, but they also had more capillaries going to their muscles in their hands. So what this means is that there was better blood perfusion. They had more blood flow to their muscles 
ultimately means they can stay at the sport longer, getting the cutting edge. And we know people like Tom Brady use chiropractic care as part of his cutting edge, which is certainly influenced his longevity. Evaluation of these trends in the group receiving chiropractic care revealed decreases Decreases in resting blood pressure, so decrease in blood pressure from getting adjusted, decrease in pulse rate from getting adjusted. These are all sympathetic or parasympathetic things that are happening. By comparison, trends in these same measures showed increases within the control group. So blood pressure rising in the control group who was not adjusted. Pulse rate rising in the group who was not adjusted. And notice the treadmill activity. So post-workout, pulse rate went back to normal faster faster recovery, all for the athletes. So let's talk about genetics and DNA because everybody wants to know is like, that's great, athletic performance, but is there a molecular genetic component to it, to this? And there absolutely is. And here, this is straight from the Journal of Molecular Genetic Medicine. And here's what they found. Increased telomere link and improvements in dysautonomia, that imbalance of the sympathetic versus parasympathetic, and then also quality of life and back pain. Etc. So this case suggests for the first time that cervical spinal alignment and posture may be directly related to telomere length. TL is telomere length and that correction thereof may have a directly related effect on health and longevity as represented by telomere length. So let me tell you what telomeres are. Telomeres are these little protective caps on the end of your DNA. So if you have shoelaces on your shoes, you know there's this little plastic piece that goes over top of your shoelaces to keep them from fraying. Telomere is almost the exact same thing, except for they're on the ends of your DNA. And as you age, those telomeres get shorter. They should get shorter. But if you're under chiropractic care, they don't, which means you're going to age more gracefully. As those telomeres get shorter, increases for cancer goes up, increases for heart disease goes up, increases for other lifestyle diseases go up because those telomeres in your DNA can't replicate exactly like they used to and they can become frayed and start to intertwine and you get problems with them. So longer telomere length after chiropractic care. Also improvements in quality of life and autonomic function as well as neck pain and back pain. But like we've already established, it's not about pain, it's about the brain, it's about improvement of quality of life, it's about being more of a producer, it's about doing the things you love to do, it's about having more creativity, more focus with your family, more presence with your family, more presence in your business, your ability to produce, your ability to create, your your ability to contribute to a community so that you can live a life worth living. Sensory processing disorders. So we see lots of kiddos here who have sensory processing disorders and learning disorders. So what's the research say about this? Well, this is just one study. This is also this is a case report and then a review of literature as well. And so here's what it says: improvement in behavior, communication, and sociability. So the first thing these authors did is they went and they wanted to look at all the studies that were out there in chiropractic on kiddos with autism or ASD. And so here's what they found. In these studies that they found, 93% of the studies reported improvement in behavior. 52 or I'm sorry, 56% of the studies reported improvements in communication. 81% of the studies reported improvements in sociability. And that's amazing. Lots and lots of results with kiddos with ASD. Within this study, they also cited some others who have done research on kids with autism spectrum disorder. And here's what these researchers found. Lum and Feedly, within this paper, they had a case series of two kids. One was three years and eight months. The other was three years and five months, both with autism, over a 12-month period, receiving chiropractic care. Both were presented with language delays. And here's what they found. Significant development in language was reported over the course of care. No other intervention was reported in conjunction with chiropractic care. So all that means is that nothing else was done except for these kiddos getting adjusted. Significant development in language over the course of care. Next, one of my colleagues, a guy I went to school with, Blossom, he reported a six-year-old male with autism receiving diversified care over a six-week period. He presented with ASD-related symptoms, including behavioral and social ability issues, having poor sleeping and eating habits, and while he was not assessed using a formal outcome instrument, subjective improvement in sleep, attitude towards school, work, and re re reduction in aggressive behavior were reported in conjunction with improvement in dysautonomia, Recorded with thermography studies, no other intervention was reported in conjunction. So again, just chiropractic care, no nutrition, no supplements, nothing like that. Same study, another one, seven-year-old male with ASD, chronic di diarrhea, nocturnal enuresis, bedwetting, chiropractic care over a three-month period. It was reported that he had a reduction in temper tantrums, improved awareness, 
Stop sleeve chewing and nocturnal enuresis bedwetting had resolved. No other intervention, just chiropractic care. Next, Fox. This is all in the same paper. It was reported that this girl, over 20, a 30-month-year-old female over a 24-week period, she began interacting with family members and was less irritable and became more tolerant to touch. No other intervention was reported except for chiropractic care. And finally, it was reported that she could speak coherently, looking forward immediately, uh, looking forward immediately following the adjustments. No other interventions were done. Improvement in child with autism following chiropractic care to reduce vertebral subluxation. So this is a different study. During the fifth week of care, a mother stated that she was definitely starting to see changes, and she was hoping that she was hoping to see with her son's care, and this was fantastic. The excitement came from all she reported this visit. She stated a few things that she had noticed with the patient that had changed recently. The first being how he had a good positive attitude. She noticed his energy level came down because while doing his homework, he is now very receptive to her trying to teach him more than average. His teacher had also reported an improvement with his behavior and she was very impressed while all this was taking part without his medication administered. His mother stated she actually threw his medication in the trash the other day, which is basically the final goodbye. Another study, Cohn explained the care of a three-year-old boy with delayed communication, cognitive growth skills. He lacked the ability to crawl normally. After undergoing care for two and a half months, there were notable improvements and reported objectively through SEMG thermography scans, which we do in our office, as well as subjectively by the patient's mother and therapist. The boy's communication skills improved throughout this time interval, as well as he started walking and also improved his language skills. And lastly, McCormick reports the results of diversified technique over care of 24 years. 24 weeks. The boy was diagnosed with ASD at the age of two years old. He displayed improved responsiveness, eye contact, and social behaviors after care. Another study, the effects of care on individuals suffering from learning disabilities like dys dyslexia. The author theorized that in children with dyslexia and learning disabilities, there was a functional disturbance to the appropriate organization of higher centers of the central nervous system. Those higher centers of the central nervous system are the neocortex that we talked about in the beginning. This lack of proper neurological organization is termed neurological disorganization. And here's what he found. Correction of vertebral subluxation, correct and nervous system interference, what we do right here in our office by chiropractic adjustments on cerebral or cognitive function so the ability to think we're not talking about pain we're talking about cognitive functions suggests it is not irrational to propose that vertebral subluxation may play a role in engendering various CNF de deficits that may be directly or indirectly related to impairment and learning or even learning disabilities of dyslexia per se so dyslexia yes other learning disabilities, absolutely, because of the way that we influence the brain. Super important. It's because of the way that we influence the brain. Again, it's not about the pain. It's about the brain. And it's all about having properly moving joints of the spine and reducing that stress response so the body can stay in healing mode. Improvements in signs and symptoms of a kid with ADHD and functional outcomes and four children receiving TRT chiropractic care. So there's this thing called reward deficiency syndrome, which involves imbalances in the brain neurotransmitters because of that chronic fighter. These authors maintain that subluxation directly interferes with certain processing, which is central to the vertebrae's ability to establish a safe state of well-being. We talk about safety and fight or flight. The body needs a sense of safety. A subluxation-free spine is necessary to maintain proper function of brain reward cascade and reduce the propensity towards RDS reward deficiency syndrome. Because RDS has been implicated in all addictions and most compulsive disorders, including ADHD, we suggest that removal of vertebral subluxation led to reestablishment of proper brain reward function and, is, and the resultant reduction of symptoms related to ADHD in these four children. So again, reduction of ADHD because of the way that we stimulate the brain. Let's talk about cognition and mental tasks just really quickly. So this is an influence of subclinical neck pain. Again, remember, subclinical neck pain is a flare-up. The pain goes away. The person doesn't have pain anymore. On the ability to perform a mental rotational task, this was a four-week study. Here's what the authors found, which I find super interesting. So again, these people had neck pain, just a quick flare-up, and then otherwise they thought they were healthy. Yet, the main finding of the study was that the subclinical neck pain group had significantly slower mental rotation response times than the healthy control groups, both at baseline and after four weeks. Although both groups improved in response time over four weeks, as predicted, the healthy group improved more.
we're going to jump down to the red circle. These results suggest that neck joint dysfunction significantly impairs cognitive processing. Your ability to think, to rationalize, to create, to have willpower, to be motivated is all impaired by joint dysfunction. So if you've ever heard someone or you've said yourself, oh, I had a flare-up but it just went away, know that you're impairing your cognitive processing. Definitively, this is the research that's out there. Again, Heidi Havoc and some others, she's amazing. They're doing amazing work. Next, resolution of hearing loss improves speech and school performance. School performance is the part that we're going to focus on. After 12 visits of chiropractic adjustments, the patient returned to the uh, ear, nose, and throat doctor for a follow-up assessment. We're going to skip down to the bottom. His teacher informed the parents that the improvement was immediate and the patient had caught up with class by the end of the third term of school. His speech had also improved just from 12 visits of chiropractic care. Imagine what a lifetime can do. How much better could we set up our kiddos? Next, immune system function. So, Chiropractic and the Neuroimmune Connection. This is an article written by Ari Cohn. He's genius in the field. And here's what he finds is that the immune system is responsible for all repair in the body. All repair in the body. All of your immune system is modulated by your nervous system. Recognizing that the brain utilizes specific pathways to the immune system for the purposes of guiding, controlling, and modulating the immune response. There's a bi-directional communication. Neuromodulators, chemical messengers of the nervous system are released and guide the immune system. The immune system communicates its status back to the nervous system by white blood cells. When the immune system is activated, immune cells also send out an array of specific chemicals, immunomodulators, to influence the function of the nervous system. So people with chronic ear infections, people with asthma, they all get results because when we remove the stress response, the immune system and the nervous system can work as they were designed to, one in hand with the other. Of the reasons that stress has such a harmful effect on health is that certain types of immune cells responsible for attacking microbes are sensitive to certain brain chemicals such as stress hormones like cortisol. And cortisol and adrenaline shut off those certain types of immune cells. Those immune cells will become inactive when they come into contact with these chemicals like cortisol and adrenaline, things that are released during the stress response. When stress hormones are released, they can slow the immune response, which could explain why the immune system suffers when people under chronic stress. Immune competence is also is also known to substantially decrease with age. So here's one of the things that, these are immunologists that found this. Expert immunologists determined that in the 96 chiropractic patients aged 21 to 87, there was no decrease whatsoever in immune competency. It's supposed to decrease with age. The only difference between the normal healthy people and the chiropractic group was that the chiropractic group were under long-term chiropractic care, over six months of regular adjustment. This suggests that chiropractic could potentially optimize whatever genetic abilities these people have so that they now can fully Fully express immune function. We're talking about optimizing genetic abilities. We're not talking about a quick fix. We're not talking about a Tylenol that you're going to have to take for the rest of your life. We're literally talking about genetic capability within each of us. This is a down to a DNA level. This is the science that's out there. This is what we know about how our bodies work that no one else is sharing in any other facet because they want you to stay on the drugs that are the quick and temporary fix that are slowly poisoning you, whereas you could fully be expressing health through your nerve system, through your immune system, by being under regular chiropractic care. Notice over six months of care. Very important. And if we just go back for a second, it's irregardless of age, patients 21 to 87. Let's talk about depression and anxiety just really quickly. Resolution of anxiety and depression along with decreased medication usage in a 30-year-old female. Removal of vertebral subluxation can remove nervous system interference leading to a decrease of neurodystrophic effect on the HPA axis. HPA axis is hypothalamic pituitary adrenal. The adrenals is where your stress hormones are released. With a balance in sympathetic nervous system and PNS, SNS is sympathetic nervous system, PNS is parasympathetic nervous system, it can lead to increased sensitivity of the adrenal glands, which will permit an increase in cortisol levels, letting the body return to optimal function with proper cortisol release. Removing vertebral subluxation allows a patient to self-regulate their hormone system involving the HPA axis, potentially leading to decrease and possible resolution of depression and panic attacks. Decrease and possible resolution of depression and panic attacks. Pregnancy. Real quickly, we already talked about this study and the effect of adjustments on the pelvic floor muscles in women. So in women of pregnancy, 
This is what they found. The changes seen in the pregnant group may be due to normal, normal due to the hormonal changes of pregnancy. This relaxation of the levator ani muscles seen with spinal manipulation may mean that spinal adjustments or manipulation could be of benefit to pregnant women's vaginal delivery by aiding the relaxation of their pelvic floor muscles if it does not occur naturally for them. So if the pelvic floor muscles don't relax, Pregnant women under regular chiropractic care are more likely to have a better, easier vaginal delivery by relaxing the levator ani muscles. This has all been studied. These are new studies, always constantly coming out. So if you have questions, I encourage you to reach out to me. If you want any of these studies, I'll be glad to supply them to you. I'm so grateful for you taking the time to listen and educate yourself because we're going to keep bringing you this information because our community needs to hear it. And this is the only way that we're going to uplift Dana Point and the surrounding communities in South Orange County to make it as healthy as we want it to be because one day our kids are going to have to lead us and the question of whether they're going to be healthy or whether they're going to be sick along the way is dependent on how well we take care of them today how we take care of ourselves today and how we lead through our actions and our decisions for others. And so I'll leave you with that. I appreciate you listening and watching, and I hope you'll tune back in as we bring you much, much more of this in the future.